Praise the Lord, everybody, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad that you joined me on this morning um, here at Cross Nation. I tell you, it's 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 snowing outside in some places of the city. We got almost seven feet of snow, but guess what? Even through all that, even through the storm, God is still good, and we have something to be thankful for. I'm so glad that we're coming upon our holiday season on Thursday. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to getting, you know, together with family. Let me tell you something, uh, Queen Janice Sanders, I don't know. She just might be the, the, the best ever. And you know, some people might call her the GOAT, the greatest of all times when it comes to Thanksgiving dinner. So I'm so thankful to get together with family and just celebrate what this season really is about. You know, um, I, I'm excited because God is really blessing us here at Cross Nation. You know what? I want y'all to excuse me. I just got done shoveling snow. So I know I got a hoodie and a vest on. This is like my, my work uniform. But, you know, we gonna, we gonna give God the praise anyway. Um, but I just, I'm just looking forward to this season and um, really focusing on what this season is really about as we come upon Thanksgiving uh, this Thursday and as we go into um, December and we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, this, um, this holiday season, I am looking forward to God really uh, refocusing and, 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 and making sure that we are giving him his just due, not only in the holiday season, but all year long. Listen, let me tell you something. We should really be celebrating and giving God thanks in a, in a special way all year long, just not during the holiday season, but all year long. And um, we are doing this as a family, as a cross nation family. And those that would like to join us um, even if you're not, you know, uh, a member here, I want you to know that you are still, you're still family. We are starting our book club and we have this book and I haven't rolled it out yet because I wanted to roll it out um, when we all come back together, you know, in the sanctuary. I already uh, kind of teed up our family here at Cross Nation about the book, but we are focusing on our praise and our worship lifestyles because um, it's so important that your praise and worship lifestyle that you we we build a culture where our worship is literally what we do our worship is not only um, a reserve for Sunday morning but it is literally a lifestyle not only is a lifestyle but it's essential to our very being, just like we breathe in and out, just like we need oxygen. It should be, um, you know, synonymous to praise and worship. You should not get out of bed and put your clothes on in the morning unless you tell God how good he has been, how good he has been to you and what he means to you. Um, I know it's so easy, you know, to get up in the morning as we pray. And guess what? God wants us to bring our petitions before him. Yes, he wants to know what we and what we need as his children. But it is more important that we share with God what he means to us, that we are willing to uh, sacrifice time to be in his presence. That is what we are focusing on uh, as a family, as Cross Nation, probably for the next eight weeks, just training our minds and getting deeper into the word, what it means to be a worshiper, um, what it means to dwell in the presence of God, what it actually means to be, to, to worship and praise him sacrificially when it, what it means to praise God when you don't feel like it in the presence of God is how you really really get to know him let me tell you something you don't get to know God by just showing up to church on Sunday you don't really get to know him 
How do you get to know God? Is when you are at home, in your prayer closet, or wherever that special place might be within your home, and you get before him, and you get in his face, and at his feet. I'm telling you, let me, let me tell you something. You can get into the presence of God anywhere. Don't, let me tell you something. Do not come to church or expect coming, you know, they, don't expect that every time you come to church, that's where you're going to find the presence of God. Now, like, yes, you will find the presence of God when you come to church, but you should develop a lifestyle of praise and worship outside of church and we use church on Sundays to fellowship with one another and we tell God how good he is but I'm telling you I am so excited on, on this journey this new journey that we are embarking upon learning how to get into the presence of God now we just came out of an awesome series which we call the journey of miracles and we spent time we spent just about three months um, from from John 1 to John 9. And now we are getting ready to embark on the next probably eight weeks or so going into the, um, into the new year um, on just getting into the presence of God. And I'm not sure, <laughs> and I'm never, you know, completely sure, but I'm not sure how we're going to call, you know, what we're going to call this series. I'm thinking about just calling it Come to the Altar. Now, um, it's so funny, you know, every time we hear that word altar, we always associate it with the altar that is in your church or, you know, at, at your church, you know, that's in the front of the church. And a lot of times we have used the altar incorrectly. I'm going to say it again. We have used the altar incorrectly. Our expect expectations at the altar have not always been correct because a lot of times we go to the altar with an expectation to get. What am I going to get from God at the altar? Where the altar is a place where you should be giving. You should be giving at the altar. You should be telling God how good he is. You should be telling God what he means to you. Not asking God for a new car, not asking God for a new house or, you know, for the Lord to fill up your bank account. And guess what? He wants to do all those things. But at the altar is where you find the presence of the Lord. And that is what we are going to be talking about. You know, I want us to refocus and recalibrate our minds as it relates to our worship, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, by definition, the word altar means it's a sacred place for sacrifice, sacrifices and gifts unto God. When you go to the altar, you should be bringing, not getting. When you go to the altar, you should be bringing and not getting. And let me tell you something, do not wait to come to church to get to the altar. Because we serve a God, number one, that is omnipresent. So if God is everywhere, that means that an altar can be built anywhere. And I'm not talking about an altar where you got to put some stones together and gather some wood. Your altar can be at home, in your prayer closet, or that special place that you have designated to get into the presence of the Lord. Let me tell you something. Some I know my, even myself and people that have pulled their cars over because they knew at that moment in time that they needed to get into the presence of the Lord. Let me tell you something. Also, you know, people, you might find a time at work where you might have to find the nearest stall to get into the presence of God, but not to ask God for something. Just to say, God, I need to feel your touch. I need to feel that you are around me. Lord, I am giving you out of my mouth, out of my very being, out of my hands, out of my feet. I am bringing a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of of worship because I just desire to be close to you. Um, I just thank God for where he is taking us 
as a church because sometimes we get into church and and we we just we just are looking to get looking to get and when we get together as a church family let us get together with the intentions to give not a get to give together to give in fellowship to offer a sacrifice of praise to offer a sacrifice of worship so we can get into the very presence and get into the face and get into to the feet of the master I'm, if you can tell, I'm excited about this direction and, and, and how God is pushing us to be a more, not only a more perfect church, but a more perfect worshiper that we can know that we can get to in, into his presence at any given time. I love, I love how Romans 12 and one, uh, one through two says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then two goes on to say, and be not conformed into this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When you worship God in that particular moment in time. When you worship God, this means that it is just you and him, that you have an audience, that you are an exclusive audience member with just you and God. And let me tell you something, what better place to be than in the presence of God? I can't think of any place that I would rather be than in the very presence of God. I love in Psalm 16, uh, 16 and 11, and David said it, said it kind of like this. He said it like this. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I'm going to read that one more time. Psalm 16 and 11. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. If you, you know what? Anybody can be happy. Anybody can be happy and anybody can be content. But to have true joy that unspeakable joy that we often talk about, it is in the presence of the Lord. It's in the presence of the Lord. And there is no other feeling that I would want more than to have joy. And I'm telling you that you can find when you are in the presence of the Lord, that presence, that time that you have spent in his presence spills over into other areas of your life. When you have a constant, a consistent, and a pure relationship with the master, it spills over into your family, it spills over into your job, it spills over into your, um, your other relationships, because you know that when you have spent time with the Lord, and you have spent true worship with the Lord, um, uh, not too many things should make you upset. But let me tell you something, and I'm not saying that you will never be upset, but when you know, when you get out of certain situations, I can go and spend some time with the Lord, I can spend, I can spend some time with my master, that's what really matters. Let me tell you, I said, that's what we should name this, you know, that's what we should name this, this series. The presence of the Lord matters. The time that you spend with God matters. I was saying, you know, earlier to you, you know, that the altar that we are trying to get to, the altar, when we spend time at the altar, it is a place where we give. Now, let me tell you something. God doesn't need anything. God doesn't need anything but he wants your worship. 
When you really love God, I almost liken it to our, our earthly relationships that we have, you know, with our parents, you know, what we have with our loved ones. When you truly love somebody, your concern is really not what you get from them. Your concern is what you are able to give to them. And I want to be special in God's family. And guess what? I already feel like I'm special in God's family. But I want to be special in God's family because God knows that I am trying to get into his presence. I am trying to get to him. Not to get, but to give. Not to get, but to give. I told our Cross Nation family on last week, when you spend true, honest, pure time in the presence of the Lord, you will find yourself asking for less. You will find yourself asking for less when you spend true, pure, uninterrupted time with the master. Why are you saying that? Guess what? God knows your heart. Matter of fact, he said he'll give you the desires of your heart. When you spend time with the Lord, he's already making a way for the things that you are asking for and the things that you are desiring before you can even part it out your lips. Because God knows you. And what he's asking for is that you get to know him him so I'm wrapping this thing up because y'all I'm only going to keep y'all attention for a little while anyways over these next six to seven weeks or so as we get into the holiday season and as we embark on a new year I submit to you that there is nothing more important than the presence of God and being in his presence and building a relationship with him that is centered around giving. God has given us so much. We just ought to be in a posture that we are always giving to him. There is nothing that God will withhold from us, especially when we walk uprightly before him. But I am challenging you to spend more time on your knees in prayer. I am challenging you as you walk down the sidewalk getting to wherever destination you might be headed to that you are spending time in his presence as you crack open your bible that you are asking god how you can draw closer to him so in this Thanksgiving season, <laughs> when you know that you are looking for gifts, um, let the gifts be God. Let that gift that keeps on giving get into his presence. He is the ultimate and eternal gift in this season. Has been and always will be. So with that, I challenge you to spend time in his presence like, ever, like, like, like never before. I'm going to be digging deeper into um, our relationship with God and cultivating that relationship and making sure that we are building altars wherever we are at to get into his presence. But like I said, there is nothing 
more important in this season of our lives that we spend time in the presence of God. I'm going to stop right there because I can stay I can stay here all day and preach about his presence. Now, I'm going to tell you where we're going um, as a church family. I want you to spend time in Genesis 16, 17, and 18. For now, um, reading those chapters. Um, and you might say, uh, you might, as you're reading those chapters, you're talking about Abraham, Sarah and Isaac, you might be saying, Tim, where does it all line up with worship? If you really dig deep into it, you will find it. Um, but here, I'm inviting you to Cross Nation um, at 10 o'clock on Sundays. Uh, we are here. We start off with an awesome praise and worship uh, service. But I'm inviting you here to, uh, if you don't have any other place to go, um, I want you to know that you are family here. You are family here at Cross Nation, but we are going into an exciting time here and, and I want you to be a part of it. If you have nowhere else to go, come here. But if you do, go and support your pastor. Go and support your church. But um, I just want to say that I love you. I thank God for you. I want you to be safe on today. Stay with your, um, stay with your families. Um, and, and just allow God to minister to you. I've given you a couple of scriptures that you can meditate on. And um, let's come together back here on next week after Thanksgiving and, and get in the presence to, of God together as a family. So with that, we love you. Um, we are praying for you um, in Jesus' name. And I want you to be blessed. And there's only one thing that is left for you to do, and that's for you to have an awesome and an excellent day. We love you.